Welcome to Community Conversations. My name is Donna Violante and I'm the Executive Director of Literacy Volunteers of Greater New Haven and with me today is Rosemary Pilch. Hi Donna. I'm the Program Manager for the Basic Literacy Program. Rosemary, I've been so impressed with the mission and the accomplishments of literacy volunteers since I came to the organization almost three years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just amazing to me uh, how the program works all with volunteers. And the fact that probably over 14,000 adults have received services from our organization in the last 40 years. How, tell me a little bit about how you came to literacy vo volunteers. Well, I actually started as a tutor. Oh, I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, my background is not in education. I have been in the financial service industry for many, many years. And through different mergers and acquisitions, I found myself looking for a career change. Uh -huh. so, and, and it just so happened I was always going to uh, teach reading and writing. That was always something in the back of my mind. I'm an avid reader. I cannot imagine my life without it. I, I don't know how people... Um, do as well as they do without the ability to read and write. I took the opportunity when they closed my branch to volunteer and I worked in the Meriden office as a volunteer for a couple of years and I had several students, some of whom I taught math to, that was a surprise to me, but anyway um, uh, it was such an experience that I persisted and I had a couple of different students I enjoyed it very much. I think the volunteers get as much out of it as the students do. They tell me all the time whenever I have the opportunity to talk to them mm -hmm. about how rewarded they feel yes. helping adults learn to read, learn to write, learn to speak English um, because they know what a difference it makes yes. in their lives. Uh, and very often when I thank them, they'll actually say back to me, "No." It's, it's us who have to thank literacy volunteers for this opportunity. And they mean it. Yeah. And they do. Many of our students, we have a range of students now. We have some people that are beginning learners. I work in the basic literacy program. There's two segments to our program that we have. Basic literacy deals with adult students. All our students are adults. They're mm -hmm. out of the school system. The basic literacy students are fluent English speakers. Mm -hmm. They have a very good verbal vocabulary. You perhaps wouldn't even know that they couldn't read in their lives. They have jobs, they have children, they have everything in their lives that you and I have except the added stress of not being able to read or read well. That's the students that we have in, in my side of the program. The ESOL program, we use ESOL now for English, for speakers of other languages. Now we're getting students that already have two or three languages, so we can't use English as a second language right. anymore. So um, that's the other side of our program. That's speaking and understanding English. Those are a lot of conversation classes. And the difference between the programs, I think, bottom line, everybody knows you can't speak English you're going to go to a place and, and, and be part of a conversation class. There's really no problem with that. You're motivated to do so, and it's going to improve your life very quickly. Reading and writing is a different matter. If people don't know that you can't read, it, it's very embarrassing. There's a lot of shame related to that. For whatever reason, in school, many of our students, uh, my students are over uh, 30. They've been out of school mm -hmm. for a long time. There's something in their lives where they can't take it anymore, and they need to go and learn how to read better. Mm -hmm. You don't tell people that, it, but it's a challenge that has to be met. It's a big deal in somebody's life. Sure. Um, when, when students come to me, one of the first things I ask them is, they always say, I want to learn how to read, read and write better. And I say, read what? What do you want to read for? And I get goals uh, from each individual student as disparate as grandparents want to help their children. They want to read to their grandchildren. They're babysitting mm -hmm. their grandchildren. They want to help them with their schoolwork. Parents want to help their children with their schoolwork. We try to find out what their specific goals are because we can use that as the content, the material in their class. It really motivates them. Absolutely motivates them to keep going. Many people want to, we've had a couple of people that want to, uh, get their driver's license. 
we have people that want to pass certification tests. We have people that want to learn more about the safety instructions at work because they're asked to sign off on them. We have people that want to get better understanding of writing memos for work. It's very personal, the goals that each individual student will have, and we try to work towards them. Some people want to learn enough academic material, how to take tests, how to um, read at a, a better level so that they can work towards getting into adult education. And what about job applications, Rosemary? Do you do a lot? Do the tutors do a lot with that? Absolutely. The um, job applications, sometimes they'll make simple resumes. This will be their goal. How do I approach this? How do I get all the information down? Applications of all kinds, they are, they're not the same for different places. We have a couple of computers that we allow people to use that um, they can actually apply for a job online with, the t with tutor's assistance. Great. Yeah. Reading in America is a big deal. Sure, and we'll th just think about the impact on a person's health, right. their personal safety, the safety of their family, if they can't read prescriptions, if they can't read medical information. I myself sometimes have difficulty understanding instructions that come with medications. Right. I can't imagine what it would be like for a person who didn't read well. That might also be a big motivator. Absolutely. It's part of the whole picture. We've had people in class that were very motivated by work. So in that class, because we're a slightly different structure from adult education, mm -hmm. adult education is a more formal structure. They have programs that can lead you to a GED or an alternative high school diploma program. S many of our students will work with us and then go to adult education. Right. We'll get them the academic skills, teach them how to take tests as part of developing their reading and writing skills. And they really don't have to commit to much more than a couple of hours a week. It is a different structure, right, right. So we've also had students now in adult education. There's a lot of uh, certification programs in adult education now. So we're able to help people working for their CNA. We had a gentleman working for uh, passing the test to for the police academy. We have very specific goals um, for individuals and we can help them do that. Sure. Because our classes are so small. Right. We'll have... I mean, we even have tutors who work with the uh, Connecticut uh, driver's manual right. to help uh, right. people who want to read well enough and to take the exam right or if they're from another country what about all the what about all the students who come because they want to take the naturalization exam right and then it's just so exciting for them and for their family when when they're when they become a citizen it, it's really just tremendous yeah. it's a big life event i can now speak english and i am proud of myself Thank you. Thank you. It's one of the things that we celebrate big time. That right. and food. All the different cultures <laughs> will bring food. And yeah. the citizenship test, we have a couple of people. If they're reading at the same level, speaking at the same level, we'll join those kind of people in the same class, and they'll all go through all the information that they need for citizenship tests yeah. and things like that. So there's no like real beginners with more advanced students. You're, the groups are homogeneous, so people feel comfortable right as and much that as way they possible. get they gain confidence and right. they become friends too yes a lot of laughter comes yeah. from a lot of classes that's part of the program manager's job that the students will come to the program manager we get referrals from other organizations that we work with we deal with all adults so there's different organizations that will encounter maybe the children and they'll understand that the parents need help working on reading and writing. People will tell us the library is a great asset for us. We've had several referrals from the library and we use the library as a place to have our classes too. And what are some of the other uh, class locations? We've had, um, we've had classes at SCOW, Spanish Community of Wallingford. We've had classes at Masters Mana. We've had classes, um, we have classes in church basements. We have any public and safe place for mm -hmm. people, uh, for our students and our tutors to meet together. Mm -hmm. What I've witnessed is that our classes uh, tend to be very welcoming. Yes. And people don't feel, in, they don't feel intimidated. They don't feel, you know, uh, threatened in any way. I think the tutors really go the extra mile, as do the program managers, you know, to make the students feel welcomed. Right. That this is a good 
safe place for them. Right. Uh, the fact that they want to improve their reading that is, is sort of a confidential Absolutely. factor. Uh, so they feel good and they gain right. confidence and, and they gain their skills. Absolutely. When they come to us, there's many questions. The tutors have many questions and the students have many questions. The program manager is kind of the, the gateway between the two. We have the resources. We can talk to the students and find out what their individual goals are. Our classes are very small. And we know the tutors. We go through training with tutors. There's a couple of classes that they, that they take with us. We ask them to observe other classes so they get an idea. Many of our tutors don't have education backgrounds. Right. They come from all different fields. Some work, some are part-time, some have college degrees. Some are retired. Some are retired, and it's, they're available all different times. As long as they have a good grasp of uh, written and verbal communications in English, they can tutor a class for yeah. us. We, we emphasize tutoring adults in our instruction so that there's many different tools we put at their disposal that they can take into the classroom. Our classes for our ESOL students are full English immersion, so the tutor does not need to speak another language. We have a class, and I always cite this as an example, we've had a class with a man from Syria, a woman from South Korea, a woman from Mexico, and a man from Pakistan. Isn't that wonderful? The, the common language is English. Right. The tutor speaks only English. Right. It was a great class. Um, and they learn all those techniques in, in, the, training, <coughs> in the training that they receive. Right. right. And in the, the visuals and the tools and the resource materials. Right that they right. use uh, in the class. Materials include everything from workbooks, textbooks. We have uh, newspaper reading stories mm -hmm. uh, that are in um, books that um, specifically for um, low-level readers. They're graded so that we can understand uh, where the the student can access these stories. Some tutors will bring in magazines. Maps. Maps. We have maps everywhere. It's pretty interesting. Right. And the constant contact. You, If you have a problem, you come up with an issue as a tutor and you're not really sure how you're going to deal with it, you ask your program manager so mm -hmm. they can resolve it. Our students have everything in their lives, as I said before, that we have plus the, the problem of not being able to speak and understand English or read and write English. So there's many tools and techniques we can bring to bear in the classroom that we, we have, uh, that we can help our tutors with at all times. Talk a little bit about how someone progresses through the program. Uh, because obviously if someone comes in at kind of a survival level from another country where they speak absolutely no English. It's going right. to take a little bit longer. We have people who are native speakers and have been in our country, mm -hmm. were born in our country mm -hmm. and went through the school system, but maybe read at only a second or third grade reading level. Mm -hmm. In your experience, how long does it really take for them to make progress? It depends upon the student. When they come to us, if they are ready to learn, it makes a huge difference. If they say, I have to do this, and they put in some time, depends upon what their particular goal is, if they need to don't know something. Some people bring in material from their work, and when they are able to read that with uh, comfort and understand fully what that material says, then they feel that they're, they, they can read and they're successful. There's a lot more to do with those people in, for a more round education, but um, they can feel that that's a success. How tutors can do individually would be, when you start with some material, depending upon how we do have a reading appraisal for students when they come to us, mm -hmm. to give us a target, to give us what they know now, to give us something to work on in class. And to from, get them into the right level class, that's right? right? To, to level them. And it's also, also the program manager will speak to the students to f determine their level as well. Some people have such test anxiety. It's one tool among many others. So we get that information from the test. We give materials for the tutor to take into the classroom for that right. student. And the feedback with the tutor and uh, the, the program manager will determine, yes, it's good for the, the student. No, the student is going right through this. It's too quick. Even when I was a tutor, I used to take material. Our student would read it in class, and I'd put it away for a couple of months later. The student would read it again and realize how far they've come. That's just super. And it would be total shock. They, they, they wouldn't feel that they've really read 
material uh, that um, everything is still a struggle or something and then you give them material that they started with and if you, you're sure you've built the vocabulary the comprehension strategies have worked and the tutor has been working on it persistently just that little bit is amazing for the the confidence of the students that come through the class in our program also after 12 hours of class time the program manager will conduct another assessment a reading assessment for mm -hmm. the students these are CASAS tests which is used by the Department of Education it's approved by the state of Connecticut right and they and that's a tool that they give us to assess its basic skills you see some of these questions it's determining how to read signs how to read message pads how to read a paycheck it's very right. much built Maybe on a basic food skills label or right a, yeah. right mm -hmm. a, a medicine bottle you a were just bottle, yes. a bus bus schedule so those that's kinds part of, of this testing and there's different levels and they're graded and uh, we can determine the progress since uh, you know based on the student success on those the program manager will give that information to the tutor mm -hmm. to continue work in those areas in class mm -hmm. so that's another source you can judge the progress of somebody um, what you might also want to add to some classes and which which sometimes we do is test taking strategies because we do have students school has been a bad experience for them yes, you know we have sure. to overcome this we have to make maybe the that's why they just stopped learning when you know that they, they were in a, a, a yeah. you know in at, in grade school in primary primary school a definite what got factor. turned off right you know to 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 reading which right. is sad but we know that it's solvable right right with persistence on right. the part of the student as I, I have a story that um, one of our um, students wrote about his life in Jamaica and he says you can go through your life in Jamaica without having to learn how to read in America you cannot you fill out a, a, applications for jobs you go to the doctor you fill out applications you go and get your driver's license you must read mm -hmm. and write to live in America successfully yeah. no one's helping you or assisting you when you're handed that form and have to right. read it and check off vital information. Right, right. As a matter of fact, sometimes you can determine if a person doesn't read or doesn't read well, if they do take the form and bring it home, if they do have um, a trusted person with them. Yeah. Many of the people uh, that we work with are parents, and one of the people uh, that they come to count on, rely on, are young children in their family. They bring forms home to these children. They take these children w with them to their doctor's appointments, to the mechanic, to speak for them, to read material for them. This is one of the ways we can help with uh, educating the, the adults. They can understand, read, write, speak, and understand the material much better, and they won't have this need to bring their children along. Kind. That's really great. Yes, yeah. it is. It's a great success. That the, some of our students count this as a, as a milestone in their lives. I went to the doctor and I didn't have to take my daughter with me. Recently, um, a man uh, who went through our program and persisted for five years because he had a goal, he had an excellent goal, and he ultimately was able to enroll in one of our Connecticut State Community Colleges and is now in a certification program in college after sticking with our program That's great. for five years. Now five years, it sounds like a long time, but if a person's coming once or twice a week right. um, and they're seeing that progress and you know, and every year going up another grade level, another grade level right. in reading, right. um, it's, it's, it's just, right. just wonderful. Right. It can be done. People think, first of all, that they're the only ones that no one else doesn't know how to read. Oh, not true. Not true. Nearly one in every four adults in our area here, ha it struggles with reading, uh, and reads at less than a basic level, which is about fifth grade. It's right. a, it's a startling figure, but it's right. reality. It's reality. And we can help. That's the important thing. That's right. We have many tutors. The people that want to help and want to volunteer, it's a wonderful group of people. I know that many students who can't read, they are very frustrated and ashamed by it. So coming to me in our program uh, would be the first step. I understand a lot of the social services, people have to take care of housing, they have to take care of food, clothing, shelter. I understand we're almost like a second tier or a third tier, but to change your life, 
and make a change that lasts and is a definitive change, you need to know how to read and write better. Absolutely. It's We're the looking, gateway to life, that's the ability right. to read, and can provide you know, someone even with with pleasure, you know, right. with right. just being able to read to their right. children or, be, or being able to, to uh, you know, read a novel or, or their right. religious material, you know, for the, for the first time. Absolutely. Um, is, is so, so, so wonderful. Every year we have our students write a little something depending upon their own abilities. They can write, uh, we have mostly uh, an overview of what literacy means to them as the general mm -hmm. theme of this because it's our publication. But they can write about whatever uh, whatever they want, and we have a party at the end of the year and celebrate their successes. How long do tutors usually, you know, stay with the program? What we ask is the commitment is um, for about a year. If we can um, have somebody to show that kind of commitment, it's good to have that uh, uh, the same student with somebody for a year. That would be ideal. Classes are generally usually one in in uh, Wallingford once a week for about two hours, mm -hmm. so it's not really a lot of um, time. Right, there's maybe a little bit of prep time. There's prepped exactly. You prepare, and after you get more experience, the the shorter the prep time because you understand what what's going on in class and what the what you need to mm -hmm. get across at mm -hmm. that class. Um, Classes generally, we, we go from late August to uh, December, and then we go from January again to the end of June. And that's our, and we match the school year, so that's pretty much the commitment we ask. We have many more tutors that stay longer than that. Yeah, um, I'll bet. We have some people that go over the summer because if they're, I do allow one on one classes because we'll have specific students come in with specific goals, and if their, their reading level isn't something that I can put with other students, and I have a tutor that's willing to take somebody one-on-one, -on -one and I'll do that as well. Well, most of the classes are small groups. Small right? groups. The most I'll have in a, in a classroom is four. Mm -hmm. Usually it's three or two students mm -hmm. per one tutor. That seems to work very well. I had a situation where I've had a lot of students come from a community college, and they needed to work on their writing, and I had a retired writer. So oh, wow. that was a group of four students, and they worked pretty intensively. That's a lot of work for a tutor to read material like that. She loved it. So it worked out very well um, during that time, and that was, my, that was the biggest group I think I've had. What have you found, Rosemary, uh, in terms of your, your position as a program manager? What's been your biggest challenge? Right now, uh, and in the past, too, it's been finding students. The basic literacy students are a small group of people. They're a smaller group of people that are willing to come forward. I talk to many of our, um, our uh, partners in the nonprofit world, should they come across anybody. They can contact me. I come here to the Wallingford Library. They set me up here. We have a, it's a good partnership. You can f easily find me in the library. And I can talk to students. You can also call our office, mm -hmm. and I can come down to the library in Wallingford and meet with students um, mm -hmm. and, and just arrange hours uh, uh, to talk with them about their needs, about what they can do, and what we can do for them. Yeah. I have a lot of tutors are available at different times. We don't have to have a structure. We can meet in the afternoon or we can meet in the evening. We use the libraries as classrooms. We can go into a discrete corner or a small study room, mm -hmm. which we've done many, many yeah. times. We can work with, with students. We definitely encourage them to come forward, change your life, start working towards reading and writing better. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, if there are viewers of uh, Community Conversations who know of people in their family or mm -hmm. friends or their, their neighborhood uh, who could use our services, you know, they can always Absolutely. refer people Absolutely. to us. I, that, this, is, I, this is such a great opportunity mm -hmm. for us to be here at uh, Wallingford Public uh, Access because getting the word out uh, to people who don't read is, is a tough thing to do. Right. So, but most people watch TV. Right. And, you know, there's a great viewership um, mm -hmm. here on, with this channel. So hopefully it's going to generate some more calls and some more people that can be served. We're ready. And can really help improve their life. We're ready for them. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So thanks so much. Thank uh, you, this Donna. Was, this is a great conversation. It was great to talk with I you. I hope that everyone, uh, you know, learned something from it and uh, knows more about Literacy Volunteers, uh, what we do, and, and how we can help. Thanks so much.